You have heard me say it before. I say this every Palm Sunday, that Palm Sunday is my favorite Sunday of the year. You have heard me say that before because it is true. Okay, I'm not, I'm not just saying that because it is Palm Sunday. If you ask me what my favorite Sunday is, when we get down into September and October, I will tell you flat out that Palm Sunday is my favorite Sunday of the, re the year. The reason why I love Palm Sunday so much is because it testifies of God's grace for each and every one of us. You see, when, when I think of Jesus entering into Jerusalem on that day, I think of what is said in John 3.16. Again, John 3, 16 says, for God loved the world. That's what it says in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. That is what John 3, 16 says to us. And, and that is what I think of when I think of that Sunday, when I think of, of Jesus going into Jerusalem, I think of God giving his only begotten son for all of us. Again, my thought for today is the debt we owe. You see, when you are in debt to someone, when you are in debt to someone, when you are in debt to maybe a bank or to a business, the idea is that you, you work to pay back the debt that you owe. Mm -hmm. And when you don't pay back that debt, when you don't pay back what you owe, we learn in our life that it can hurt you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can find yourself in, in a great deal of trouble. So you see, I tell you today that there was a price that was paid. There was a price that was paid for each and every one of us. And so the question that I ask here today is that is, do you realize that there is a debt that you owe? Amen. Are you paying back that debt you owe? Do you know who you should be paying that debt to? Do you know who you should be paying it back to? Are you in trouble today? You see, when we read John 3, 16, I tell you again that we are getting a picture of God's grace towards all of us. Jesus again said, for God so loved the world. That is what he told Nicodemus there in that passage of scripture out of the third chapter of John's gospel. When I, when I read that scripture, I don't know if you all are like me, but when I read that verse specifically, I often wonder to myself, what have I done? Mm -hmm. What have I done for God to have loved me? Mm -hmm. Jesus was in this world a, a great deal earlier than I was in this world, mm -hmm. than you were in this world. Mm -hmm. So, I often wonder to myself, what did God see in me for him to have loved me before I was ever a thought, before I ever exited her womb? What was it that he saw in me for, for him to send his only begotten son for me, for, for him to save me? Again, I don't know if you all ever consider that. I don't know if you all have ever thought about that. The fact that God loved you before you ever had a thought. Before you ever crawled on the ground. Before you ever took a step. God loved you and he gave his only begotten son for you. Specifically for you. And, and again, I often wonder, what have I done for him to love me? All right. All right. Because after all, like everybody else, I'm just a sinner. Well, well. Like everybody else, 
I have skeletons in, in my closet that I would hope not burst and, and fall out of the closet on me. That, that I would like to maybe keep to myself. Mm -hmm. that, that I would like to keep from my mom and, and from my brother, from his girlfriend, from, 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 from my sister, my niece and my nephew, and all of my family and friends. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's between me and God. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people, when they find something out about you, they like to go on about you. Yeah. But God saw fit to save me. God, he still loved every last one of us. Yeah. And he gave. Yeah. Emphasis on he gave. He gave his only begotten son for free. Yeah. I don't have to pay anything for Jesus. Yeah. God gave for free. The fact that God gave his only begotten son for free, mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. to save me, mm -hmm. I tell you again, it fills me with a great amount of joy. Yeah. The reason why it fills me with so much joy is because I'm not burdened by anything. All right. mm -hmm. All right. Yes, I have my worries. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have my burdens. Yeah. But, 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 yeah. but get this. Mm -hmm. I am able to cast my burdens unto the Lord. Oh, yes. I'm, a, I'm able to, to cast my worries, my, my fears, my, my anxieties. I'm able to cast them unto the Lord. All right. the, the reason why I love Palm Sunday so much mm -hmm. is because God gave his only begotten son so that I could be justified of my unrighteousness, oh, yeah. my iniquities. I could be justified of my sins. Again, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you feel about Palm Sunday. I don't know how you feel about Jesus, but that's how I feel. Well, yeah. well, yeah. Because all of that was done for me oh, when yeah. Jesus entered into Jerusalem oh, yeah. to suffer for me, mm -hmm. to carry out, to, to take on God's wrath for me. Well, well. See, I am justified of my sins through what God gave mm -hmm. His only begotten Son, mm -hmm. through His shed blood. Mm -hmm. Thanks to God, I won't have to face His wrath. Well, thank you. And so, again, I tell you today that I understand that there is a debt mm -hmm. that I owe. Do you understand that there is a debt you owe today? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This Palm Sunday, even though it is my favorite Sunday of the year, even though I am filled with a great amount of joy, yes. I tell you that this Palm Sunday, however, comes with a bit of bitterness mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This Palm Sunday, it comes with a bit of, of sadness. All right. For me, mm -hmm. not for anything that I am going through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because, again, I live in this world. Amen. And I'm not saying it is a bad thing for me to live in this world, but mm -hmm. I'm able to look around again at all that is going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, you would hope that things would get better, but... Just from last Palm Sunday where we weren't even able to gather together because of a pandemic and where you figured we had an opportunity to love each other once again. We, 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 we come a year later and again there was a mass killing that took place in Georgia a couple of weeks ago. And, and, and it hurt my heart because I am someone that looks at the news. And it hurt my heart to see a little daughter talk about her dad who, who she was so worried that she would not be able to see again and that he ended up in the hospital. It hurt my heart. Every time I see a child talking about, about their parents because my dad's death, even though it was uh, a decade ago, it still weighs on me today. So it hurts my heart to see someone suffering, especially a little child suffer. Not only was there a mass killing there, there was a mass killing in, in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. 
it, again, I tell you that it, it hurts my heart. So much so that on my favorite Sunday of the year, there's a bit of bitterness and the sadness there for me. My sadness, it comes today from the continued anguish and the continued suffering that takes place in our society, all because of, of hatred, all because of anger. The things that it seems to be dwelling in, in most of man's heart today. Yeah. Anger and hatred. Yeah. The senseless violence and the senseless hatred, it doesn't seem to be going away. All right. Unless there's a lockdown because of a virus. Mm -hmm. This seems to be the only time that it ever goes away. Well. When we can't go out. Well. That, that well. seems to be the only times that there aren't mass murders mm -hmm. where there isn't senseless violence. But even in the lockdown, we see that hatred still has a way of circling around. Oh, yeah. It makes me sick mm -hmm. to my stomach. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it wounds me. It wounds me in my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why it wounds me in my spirit is because I just spoke a great deal about what God did for me and what God did for everybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. But we don't seem to understand the magnitude of what God did for us. All right. All right. We don't seem to understand the magnitude of God giving his only begotten son for us. Mm -hmm. For our iniquities, for our unrighteousness, for our sins. We don't seem to understand the magnitude of the depth that we owe. Well, well. You see, if we understood the magnitude of the depth that we owe, we would live our life a great deal differently, wouldn't we? Well, well. Oh. We don't seem to understand the magnitude of the great depth we owe mm -hmm. because of God's grace towards us. Mm -hmm. You see, we were created in the image of, mm -hmm. uh, of God, weren't mm -hmm. we? We were created in his image and in his likeness. A lot of times we, we just kind of just read over that. We don't take a moment to understand what that means. So let me, let me tell you what that means here real quick here. When God created us in his image and in his likeness, when he placed Adam in the garden, when he placed Eve in the garden, do you understand that the intent was not for man to die? When he placed Adam and Eve in the garden, do you understand that God wanted to dwell with man eternally right then and there? He told them be fruitful and multiply. And the idea of the goal was, was to dwell with mankind right then and there eternally. We, we already had his righteousness. We, we already had his glory. Yes. We, we, we had a glow about us yes, in the garden right yes. then and there. There was no work that we had to do, but man fell. Right. We fell there in the garden to mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. But even when we fell in the garden to sin, what did God do again for us? He planted right there in the garden his only begotten son. Yeah. I referenced it in the Sunday school lesson that is this week. Mm -hmm. where, where, he re where he prophesied his son right there in the garden. That he would bruise the head of the one that caused man to, to fail. All right. All that right. we would be saved from that sin. He mm -hmm. sent his only begotten son for us to save us. And again, I tell you today, we don't live our lives like we, we understand the magnitude of having a second chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, our life is a second chance and opportunity oh, yeah. yes, sir. to live our life oh, yeah. in a manner yeah. in which would be pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Again, the depth we owe. Mm -hmm. Now in the Bible, you will see that over in the New Testament, the apostles, they understood a great deal that they had a second chance. Yeah, yeah. They, they understood 
the magnitude of God's saving grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a look here today at Paul. And we'll see here with Paul mm -hmm. that Paul, he understood the magnitude of God's saving grace. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. When I say that Paul understood the magnitude of, of God's saving grace, we, we have to remember this man, Paul. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that he was headed down a, a very dark path, oh, yeah. full in his convictions, mm -hmm. believing that he was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. How many of us are like that today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Living our life full in our convictions, mm -hmm. believing that we are living life right, mm -hmm. believing that we are doing the right and good thing. Mm -hmm. Full in our convictions, but many of us are headed down a very dark path. All right. But you see, for Paul, when he was headed down that dark path, going down Damascus Road, as I referenced a few Sundays ago when we last met, mm -hmm. he, he had a, a meeting. God revealed himself to Paul, mm -hmm. and Paul had to fall down to his knees mm -hmm. in the face of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it was right then and there on Damascus Road mm -hmm. that Paul was saved. Amen. He, he began to understand right then and there the magnitude mm -hmm. of God's grace. Mm -hmm. yes, and when we talk about God's grace, we are talking about his unmerited love, his unmerited favor towards us. Mm -hmm. And so I tell you that Paul understood right then and there the magnitude of God's grace on him. Yeah. Because Paul understood right then and there that he had some very dark and bad deeds that he had done. Mm -hmm. But in those dark and very bad deeds that he had done, he saw that God had forgave him, mm -hmm. that God still loved him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we see him say pointedly here in our key verse today, he says that we are doctors. Mm -hmm. He says again, therefore, brethren, we are are debtors. Yeah, yeah. See, in our recent Sunday school lesson, if you read it, if you have listened to it, we saw him say over in the first chapter of Romans, mm -hmm. and in the 14th verse there, we saw him say that he was a debtor. Mm -hmm. He understood very well that he was a debtor, mm -hmm. that there was something that he owed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you'll see him say that in that 14th verse over in the first chapter of Romans, you'll see him say that he was a debtor to the Greeks and to the barbarians. Yeah. Yeah. The barbarians, I want you to understand, were, were in it was essentially anybody who was not Greek. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't they, they were not Greek. They were not born uh, 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 Greek. They did not participate in Greek customs and, and traditions. So mm -hmm. essentially everybody else or barbarians. So he was saying that he was a debtor to everyone. And so when we see him say that, it, it may make us wonder. It may make us ask the question, why? Why would he say that he was a debtor to everyone? Why would he say that he was a debtor to the Greeks? Why would he say that he was a, a debtor to the barbarians? Was did they do something for him mm -hmm. that he felt he owed them one? Mm -hmm. You know how when, when, when someone do something for you, you feel like you owe them one? All right. I don't know how many movies and TV shows, what kind of movies or TV shows you look at, but, but a lot of times when somebody gets saved from a car that's about to run them over or something that's about to hit them, mm -hmm. they'll turn around to the one that saved them and they say, hey, man, I owe you one. So somebody may ask him the may, may be asking the question, well, well, did the Greeks or the barbarians do something for Paul to where he may have felt that he owed them one? Well, let's take a look at this here today. Because you see, I want you to understand here that Paul, he spoke uh, quite a bit in his writings. Mm -hmm. he, he spoke quite a bit about a debt yeah. that, that we owed that he owed as well. 
You see, you'll see over in First Corinthians, y'all know how I am. I hope y'all was ready to turn with me today. Over in First Corinthians, we'll see him say two times, we'll see him speak about this debt that he owed. The first time is over in the sixth chapter, and you'll see it in the 20th verse there. Paul, he wrote to the Corinthians, he said, you were bought at a price. Mm -hmm. You said that's what it say, auntie? Mm -hmm. So I'm not making that up, right, auntie? You you see it there in, okay, just making sure. Because I I want everybody who's watching this or who's listening to this to understand preacher not making it up. He told them, he said, you were bought at a price. He then said, therefore, look at this, glorify God in your body Mm -hmm. and in your spirit, Mm -hmm. which are God's. Mm -hmm. Said your body was given to you by God. Your spirit was given to you by God. Said that you were bought at a price. That's what he said to those who were in Corinth. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He's saying that to us today as well. I told y'all he said that two times in in that letter, right? Mm -hmm. To the Corinthians. The second time you'll see him say this is the next chapter over in the seventh chapter. The 23rd verse in that seventh chapter. You'll see Paul write and say again, he says, you were bought again at a price. Mm -hmm. Do we all see that again? Mm -hmm. Not making that up, right? He says, you were bought at a price. And then he says, do not become slaves of men. Mm -hmm. You were bought at a price says the first time around says glorify God second time around he says do not become slaves of men Mm -hmm. so what do we take from those two verses there let's dive in the first thing that I want to take away from both of those verses there is that Paul he understood very well here that his life and everybody else's life who was around him at that time, Mm -hmm. who came before him and who would come after him, Mm -hmm. he understood that all of our lives came at a price. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that your life Mm -hmm. came at a price today? Yes, sir. Okay, many of us in this room will say that. So that question, you know, that's for everyone listening and and those who are watching. That question is for all of us. Do you understand your life came at a price? Okay. So that's, that's the first thing. And we'll dive into that here. There's another thing that we'll get to in a moment. So Paul, he understood well that his life came at a price. But the question that someone will ask today is, well, who paid the price? Because someone may be asking the question still, well, did the Greeks, Mm -hmm. did the barbarians, did somebody save Paul's life? That he feels that there was a debt that he owed to them, Mm -hmm. that his life came at a price. Somebody may be asking that question. But there's a third scripture here that I want to reference that is over in the book of Acts, the 20th chapter. And you can see the verse down in the 28th verse if you want to turn there and look at it. You will see when you get over there to the 20th chapter of Acts in the 28th verse, you'll see that Paul spoke to the elders in that scripture who happened to be Greek. Mm -hmm. You see to the Greek elders that Paul told them to take heed is what he says there. He told them to take heed to themselves, to take heed to all of their flock. Take heed. Mm -hmm. Be careful. 
is, is, is what Paul was saying there. The reason why he was telling them that is because God had purchased them, the elders, and God had purchased their flocks, Paul said, with his own blood. God, I want you to understand, God had purchased their lives, Paul said, with his own blood. Your life came at a price. Mm -hmm. Who paid that price? Mm -hmm. God paid that price. Mm -hmm. How did God pay that price? Mm -hmm. Did he pay it with a George Washington or <laughs> Abraham Lincoln? No. Was it some higher bill than that? No. 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 Paul said that it was paid with his own blood. So somebody go say, what, what does this mean? God can bleed? Yes, God did bleed. We try to make this point to everybody. We try to make it clear every year. You see, in December, I talk about how God put himself into the womb of Mary. And out of the womb came his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. God in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. God gave his only begotten son to the world. Amen. Amen. So that all of those who believe in his son mm -hmm. would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Oh, yeah. What did his son do for us? He shed his blood. God shed his blood for all of us. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. On the cross, he shed his blood for all of us. He is the propitiation of our sins. He is the atonement offering, in other words. He is, in other words, the scapegoat for our sins. All of our sins was placed on Jesus. And for that, his blood was shed. So that you and I can be justified of our sins. The great price that was paid. So again, let us think about this here for a moment. Mm -hmm. If someone saved you from a great tragedy, mm -hmm. would you not feel indebted to them? Oh, yes. If yes. somebody saved you from a bullet, mm -hmm. would you not feel indebted to them? What would you try to do for them? Yeah. If somebody saved you from getting hit by a car, mm -hmm. what would you do for them? Mm -hmm. You would try to pay them back in some kind of way. God, I hope somebody will be that way. Mm -hmm. You never know with people nowadays. Mm -hmm. But but I hope that someone would, would, would try to pay them back. Mm -hmm. God saved us from a tragedy. God saved me from a tragedy. Mm -hmm. God saved you from a tragedy. Yes, sir. God saved us from a great tragedy. So why don't we feel indebted to him? Why don't we feel we owe him one? Well. Mm -hmm. Why don't we feel like we need to pay the Lord back in the life we live today? Somebody's going to say, well, preacher, preacher, I, I do. You know how we get when, when, when we was in school and, and the teacher would say what the bad kids was doing. And, and, you know, we would sit around and be like, I didn't do that. You know, we'd be trying to raise our hand up to escape the punishment. I didn't do that. And I, I tell you, sadly, on this Palm Sunday, it feels to me that we are not moved in our spirits the same way that Paul was moved in his spirit. Mm -hmm. To where Paul felt that he was a debtor. Mm -hmm. 
You see, Paul, he was not a debtor to the Greeks. He was not a debtor to the barbarians necessarily. Paul was saying that he was a debtor to the Lord because it was God's saving grace that saved him. And because of God's saving grace that saved him, he felt that he owed God his life. And so Paul lived in a manner in which the Lord commanded of him to love those who was around him. And so Paul being a debtor to the Lord, he went about in a grace towards all of those who were around him. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, sadly on this Palm Sunday, it feels to me that we are not moved in our spirits the same way that Paul was. Again, the mass killings mm -hmm. that have been going on since I was in high school. Yeah. And they were, I'm pretty sure, were going on well before then. We can talk about Tulsa. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the, the mass incarceration of, of black folks mm -hmm. that happened here in this country. Mm -hmm. we, we can talk about the, the mass killings. We can talk about the, the outright hatred that has been taking place seemingly forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why can't we do better? Mm -hmm. So many folks go around and they call themselves Christians, mm -hmm. saying that they are believers in God. But how are you living your life? Mm -hmm. Are you living your life like you owe a debt to God yeah. today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much violence, so much hatred going on in our world today. And I just began to try to imagine in my mind, how would Jesus feel if he was physically here? I know he's watching us spiritually, but you know, a lot of folks feel differently when they are able to physically see something. I, I, I try to imagine it. How Jesus would feel if, if he was physically here in the world today to witness the mass killings. Well, well, mm -hmm. If he was here to witness all of the hatred. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The hatred that goes on because of someone's race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because of, of what someone may believe. I try to imagine it. Just imagine how Jesus would feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he knew, if he was here to see the, 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 the hatred that pours out of man's heart. Well, well. The, the hatred that some have behind locked doors when they continue to scheme and continue to plan how they can suppress and oppress mm -hmm. those who live around them. Mm -hmm. Imagine how, how Jesus would feel today. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Is this how we repay the debt we owe to the Lord? Is this how we repay the debt that we owe to God for saving us mm -hmm. today? And see, I tell you today that we can go about it a much better way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can go about things a, a much better way today. Mm -hmm. And see, in our hearts, in our spirits, I tell you that we should be moved just as Paul was moved towards those around him. And we need to understand the, the moral philosophy of Jesus Christ so that we can move in the manner in which Paul moved. Mm -hmm. You see, we, yes, are supposed to share the gospel with all nations. That's what Jesus commanded us. That's what he commissioned us to do. But Jesus, his moral philosophy, I want you to understand, was for us to be servants for us to be debtors mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to say, well, you just said, you just quoted scripture where Paul said we aren't to be slaves to men. Mm -hmm. But when we work as servants, as debtors to each other, we should be doing that out of our choice, yeah. mm -hmm. out of free will mm -hmm. that was given to us by God himself. That is a choice that we should be making today, a choice in which Jesus mm -hmm. hopes that we would take, a choice that Jesus hopes that we would do. Yes, yes. 
Let us remember here that Jesus, his moral philosophy, he said to the disciples, he said, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. That's what Jesus said. That's part of his moral philosophy of being in depth to one another how we can help each other, how we can best serve each other. If I wipe your feet, you can wipe my feet as well. And I do my best to wipe your feet. And I hope that you would do your best to, to help me out as well. We, as I have said before, we were put in this world not to be selfish. We were put in this world to help one another, to be there for each other. That's what we was put in this world for. We are to serve each other yeah. and we ought to do so freely and not as slaves. Mm -hmm. We are not slaves to man and we are not slaves to our bodies as well. Again, look what Paul said there in my key verse. Mm -hmm. He said that therefore brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. That's what he said there in my key verse today. All right. Jesus, he said, a new commandment I give to you, mm -hmm. that you love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said, mm -hmm. that you also love one another. He repeated. That is how we repay our debt if we are moved to do so. That is how we repay the debt we owe to God if you choose to do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you go around and you say that you are a believer in God, it shouldn't be a hard choice to make. Mm -hmm. If you are genuine in your faith, if you are true to your faith, mm -hmm. then paying back that debt you owe to God should be a simple thing. Mm -hmm. It should be something that you do freely. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus taught. This is his philo his philosophy. I want you to understand that Jesus, he didn't go piously into the synagogue every Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he didn't go piously into the synagogue every Sabbath and sit in the synagogue with his nose stuck up in the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't consider how he could hurt someone, how he could suppress someone, how he could oppress someone. Jesus, Jesus didn't do that. So why do we do that? Do we think ourselves better than Jesus? Do, do we think ourselves better than the apostles? Do we think ourselves better than even Paul, who I focused on here in my sermon today? Some of us, some of us do. Some of us do. We have seen here that Paul said that we are debtors not to the flesh. Mm -hmm. But some of us, we live in a manner like we owe our flesh everything. Mm -hmm. right. What do we owe our flesh? <laughs> what do we owe our lust? What do we owe our passions? Mm -hmm. What do we owe our selfish ambitions? Some live like they owe their flesh. Some live like they owe their, their lust, their passions, their selfish ambitions. Mm -hmm. Some live like they owe those things everything. Oh, yeah. Working to fulfill their, their, their lust, mm -hmm. their, their, their passions. Mm -hmm. Working to fulfill their, their selfish ambitions. Well. Which are again works of the flesh. I tell you today that we ought not do such a thing. Right. Some do it, but they don't realize that they are making themselves a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. But as we read in our response of reading today, Jesus saved us from such bondage. And I tell you again, we owe our lives to the Lord for giving us his only begotten son. We owe our lives to him, not to this flesh, not to our selfish ambitions, not to sin, 
not to the world and not to the devil. Mm -hmm. The best way that we can pay back our debt, mm -hmm. the best way that we can pay back our debt to God is to pay forward our love to one another. Amen. That is the best way that we can repay our debt today. Amen. I tell you again, this Palm Sunday, it leaves me with a bit of bitterness. It leaves me with a bit of sadness. But my hope is still there. My hope is still there because my hope is in the Lord. My faith is in God today. So this Palm Sunday, any anger or any hatred that may be in your hearts, I pray it removed. And I pray that the Lord opens us up to love and that love will enter into the hearts of you and that love will enter into the hearts of all men. Amen. 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 Amen.